Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. In this video, I'm going to have a look at conditional formatting within Smartsheet and give you a view of how I use it. So let's dive in. So in here, I've got quite a colourful sheet. Um, and the reason why I make it so colourful is it means at a glance, these things tell a team what's going on. So for example, green properties here mean that they're ready to go. Um, the darker blue means that the people have moved in. And again, this this let color here just indicates that a property has been let in this case. And so they know what the status is, it's let or available. And again, there's a series of other colors that you can use down here to say that the cleaning is overdue um, in these ones. Um, these are the properties which haven't been moved out of yet. And clearly you can use this in whatever format for your sheets. In this example, I'm doing it with a property scenario uh, here. So how does the conditional formatting work? Well, you've got this little button up here and it says conditional formatting. You've got a little help video, watch video, etc. And again, just giving you a bit of a view on that. So if I press that button and it will show the variety of rules that I've got set up. Now, the really kind of one key point here on the rules is that the order you do them in is the order that they get applied. So if I change this what, what you see this one at the bottom, which is orange at the moment, this is just about the cleaning date if it's in the past. Now, if I, if I was to move that to the top, that will change things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you some examples of various things that um, we, could, we could look at here. So firstly, what I want to do now is say that if the building works on a property has started, then I want it to change the row to a different color. So let's just have a look here. What am I going to do? So if I go to here and I'm going to add a new rule and I'm going to say if the building works is checked then what I want it to do apply this format and let's just choose something um, like purple and then what it does is it applies this format to the entire row for example so if I press OK and come out you can see it's applied that to the entire row which you may or may not want again the joy here is that you can be a bit more specific and say apply this format not to the entire row, but actually what we're going to do now is we're going to say not the entire row, I just want to apply that to certain elements within here. So let's have a look where we want it to show. Well, we can highlight, for example, the work status and the BW started. So let me change that to be work status and BW started. And you can see now it just isolates it to these items here. Now, if you see above, these items also show that the you know, would indicate um, that the BW is checked and so should be purple as well. The reason they're not showing up as purple is because this is at the bottom of the list. So as it says here, higher rules take priority over lower rules. So if I want this to work, now if I just start moving up the list, let's just move it up a couple of places, nothing happens, it's still down but lower. Move it up, still no. And then if I just gonna, I'm gonna move it all the way to the top and you can see immediately it's now gone above one of those rules and it's kicked in. So if I go drop it there, and then you can see it immediately just stops when it's, so that's the rule where it changes on that side. So I'm gonna move it to the bottom. So that's, that's one thing here. Now, the other piece is you can also then set it so that you can have multiple conditions here. So one, what I can do is I'm going to add conditions to this. Before I do that, actually I'm gonna clone the rule. So often I do this because I want, I create a rule and I go, well, okay, let me do do something with that rule. In fact, this is the this is the building works that I want to clone. So if you make a rule and you decide you don't want it, you can either one, disable it, which means it no longer works, but it's there when you want to use it again, and you can turn it off and enable it. Or what you can do is you can just delete the rule and it's gone. In this case, I want to clone the rule and make a copy of it. So now I've got it, I say, well, I'm going to use this one but I'm also going to add a condition to it. So if I add the condition, I'm going to say if it is let and the building works has started, then I want it to, so I'm going to go to um, available let, and I'm going to go to let. What I want to do is to be aware of this one. So if it's available and let, then apply this format to the property name, for example. So let me just go in, apply this format, and I'm gonna make it, um, in this case, 
Let's just go for well, bright red, why not? And I'm going to go to the property name and say, well, apply that here instead. So if we just do that, but and property let, there we go. And so you can see now that, that has come up here on that basis because the property is let. If I click down below here, oops, cancel. Let me just save this before I come away. And now you can see if I click here, then that also kicks in. Now, the let's bit hasn't changed color because of the priority, priority side. Whereas if I now drag this to the top of the list or at least above the, the priority bit, and you can see the let bit I've got at the top deliberately, then, then that kicks in. So again, move the order and it doesn't work on that side. So you know, just, just to give you a sense, you can add in multitude of conditions as you go. So you can, so this is all a case about working out the logic of what do you want to do. So my piece always is, do I have a column? So I'm going to discard these changes. I always look at it and go, right, what do I want to happen? And do I have a column which it can then look at to make that piece. And sometimes I need to add an additional column where I use a formula for it to say, well, if this happens, then tick this box. So for example, I could have, a, and I did previously, have a formula in here, which was, you know, if building works, if brackets, you know, the, the building works, you know, um, if that equals three building works are started, and I'll just write that in, then tick that box. Then you can use that as a trigger for the conditional formatting. Again, or clearly, obviously, you can get it to work off if this status is that as well. So that's just a kind of a, a bit of a view in terms of the conditional formatting. One point to note is that as you do it, you can clone the rules. But unlike, say, in Excel, where you can apply conditional formatting across multi a multitude of rows here, you need to specify the conditional for formatting per column. So if you want to add these to a lot of columns, then you do need to take your time and you can't copy conditional formatting between one sheet and another. So again, you have to invest the time in doing it, but it's incredibly robust once you have it in, because unlike say in an Excel piece where it might miss items out that are added below um, the, the range, within Smartsheet, it is in the whole column. So that's absolutely fantastic on that side. So. Trust that's been useful, a little view at conditional formatting, and again, more tips and tricks to follow in due course. Thanks for watching.